If you got a Bible, go to Proverbs 22. Yes, we get loud for the Word of God. And we've been in this series on the book of Proverbs, studying the wisdom God gives us. And I have loved this series. I've been reading a proverb a day. Some days I've read a couple more because it's so good. I'm like, I want to read three chapters because it's so good. It's just rich with practical wisdom and insight from God's word. And we're going to continue this series into next month for the next several weeks. But I want to preach to you today from this unique verse. It's Proverbs 22, verse 28. God gave me a word for this weekend specifically. And he says this, do not move the ancient boundary stone set up by your ancestors. One version says, do not move, remove not the ancient stones that your fathers set up for you. I want to title this message, Follow the Ancient Stones. Follow the Ancient Stones. What was he talking about? Do not move. I've got a stone with me up here. He says, do not move the stones that your fathers, your ancestors set up for you. In the mid-1940s, when World War II had come to an end, there were still a few CIA agents that were left behind in certain countries. One by the man, uh, by the name of Douglas McKinnon. And he was in communist China trying to escape out. People had found out that he was a spy. He was a CIA agent. And he was left behind to destroy documents there. And so America came up with a plan to get Douglas out of China. And they said, you're going to have to trek by foot a thousand miles through the Himalayan mountains. True story. He would journal about this. But he would trek on foot through Tibet, through the Himalayan mountains to get into India. It was the pathway towards freedom. And as he was trekking along this path through the Himalayan mountains, he was following this path. And at times he would drift off the path. He would find himself lost in the woods. And he would come across native Indians that lived in these mountains. And he would say, how do I get back to the right path? And they would say, look for the stones. Look for the stones. Follow the stones. The stones uh, lead towards India. If you'll follow the stone-laid path, you'll find your way towards freedom. True story. So he's finding his way through this stone path. And occasionally he would get lost again. At one point he asked the native Indians, he said, what are these stones when were these stones laid and they said hundreds of years before we got here there were journeyers who had trekked from china to india through the himalayan mountains and every time a journeyer died they would bury that journeyer that traveler and they would lay stones on his grave to continue the path towards freedom so the path markers were the path makers these stones represented graves, really burial sites, of people who had tried to find their way towards freedom and didn't make it, but they laid the path. Everybody say, follow the stones. Oftentimes, we get off the path in life. We've all missed it. We've all missed the step. But in this story, I love that these people came and, and they came beside Douglas and his there was two other guys with them. They had a mule, and they would say, just get back to the stones. Get back to the stones. Get back to those boundary ancient stones. If you will follow the ancient stones, you will find your path towards freedom. This is what got us to where we are today. Don't move the stones. Don't move the stones of what's been laid behind you. Lord, I just pray again that you would speak to us through this message. God, let us leave with wisdom and insight from your word on following God, your way, your path that you've marked out for us in Jesus' name, amen. When I think about these stones and I think about people who laid their lives down for you and for me, who lived and modeled a path for us to follow, even right here in our own church, I think about Billy Joe Darty, right? That when I go to his gravestone that's a few miles from here in a, in a cemetery, I, I, I see his name etched in stone, and I see the scripture that's etched on that, that stone that represents his burial site. But more importantly, I walk into this building, and I remember the life he lived. I remember the love that he modeled, the forgiveness he walked in. He was laying a path for his kids to follow. When I look across the street and I see the praying hands, I'm reminded of the man who built Oral Roberts University, Oral Roberts himself. 
He used to come and preach at Victory in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s before he passed away. What was he doing? He was laying a path, a path of stones lived by faith. And you go, what are you talking about? He was a stone. See, in 1 Peter 2, verse 4, Peter says that you and I are living stones, that our lives are like stones being laid out because God is building himself a temple. Everybody say, I am a living stone. So when I think about people in our city like Kenneth Hagin, who's now in heaven, uh, and, and, and people in our nation like Billy Graham, they were living their life and they were marking a path out for us. Billy Joe Darty, they were leaving stones to follow this path. Everybody say, follow the stones. And what Proverbs says is, don't move the stones. Because if you move the stones, you start leading people down the wrong path. Can you imagine if the CIA agent, as he's trekking through the Himalayan mountains, thought it would be funny and thought, you know what, for the people that are behind us a few miles back, let's move this stone this way. Let's move this stone this way, and let's cover this stone up, and let's leave this stone over here so that they don't find their way towards freedom. What we have right now is we have a society that's moving stones, right? People are saying, I know that God created male and female, but I just think we should have more options with this. I just don't think God knew what he was doing. So let's move this stone, and let's start defining our own genders, it's getting quiet today. Um, I know God created us in his image, and I know God called us to treat each other with kindness and respect, but I think we should do whatever we want to our neighbor. I think we should treat people however we want to treat them. And we're moving stones, whether it's sexual preferences or gender ideology or just moral compasses. Proverbs is this, it's like this true north compass to say, get back to the ancient stones. If you're going to be blessed, if you're going to make it, you can't just keep moving stones around. Here's another way to put it. I need you three men just to stand up just for a minute, if that's okay. Y'all stand here. Just face the church. And I, I want you guys to represent the stones that were laid out in Scripture. So when King Solomon became king, before him there were other men that lived for God. Think about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, they don't all look like they're from the same family. But this is modern family right here, okay? But just think Abraham, right? Abraham says, look, we're going to move into this land that we don't know where we're going, but God called us to go. So I'm showing you an example of faith, right? Abraham was teaching Isaac, follow a path of faith. Follow a path of sacrifice. When, I, when Isaac was being laid on the altar, obey God no matter what, right? So he's leaving behind this stone of commitment, this stone of faith, this stone of faithfulness to God. Imagine if Isaac was like, you're old school, dad. I'm moving your way out. We're going to do what we want to do in our generation. We're going we're gonna to do whatever feels good in the moment. And then Isaac lays a path out for Jacob. And Jacob is now a father. And he goes, you know what? Forget you, dad. I'm moving the ancient stone. It doesn't matter what my dad taught me about right or wrong. I'm going to steal if I feel like stealing. I'm going to cheat if I feel. And what we have is we have people who are moving stones based on what feels good in the moment. And then justify it. This is, this is what everyone's doing today. And I love how Proverbs warns us. He says, if you move these stones, if you move these stones, here's the warning. If you move these stones, you're going to get off the path God has for you. So he says, don't move the ancient stone. These stones are laid out as a path of life to you. Give these guys a big hand. In Proverbs 3, verse 1, the wisest man in the world, he says, do not forget these teachings, these commandments. When Moses was talking to God and God began to give Moses these morals and these values, he says, listen, you shall have no other God before me. You know what God told Moses to do? He says, I'm going to put this in stone. I'm going to give you 10 commandments, and they are going to be etched in stone. Everybody say, follow the stones. Now, I know we're in the New Testament, and Jesus, he didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law, right? So he fulfills the law with two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you do these things, you will be blessed, right? There is a pathway 
towards a blessed life. There's a pathway that God laid out for us, and it's laid out through these stones. And the wise man says, don't lose these commandments. Don't move these stones around. This is where the blessings happen. As we're coming into Memorial Day weekend, I was reflecting on movies and stories that I've heard about people who served our country and fought for our freedoms, who served in the military and laid their lives down so that we could have the freedoms we have here in America today. By the way, tomorrow is not just a day off. Tomorrow is a day to remember because freedom is not free. It came with a price. There are many men and women who laid their lives down so that you and I can live in this country and enjoy the freedom to worship and the freedom to gather and freedom from a communist regime. And I was reflecting on this one movie I saw and I was thinking, I've got to show this to the church because this ties together the message. There's this moment near the end of this movie, true story, where this man realizes that he's been rescued by all of these soldiers who laid their lives down just for him. Their whole mission was to save this one young man so that his mom would not have to bury her fifth and last child. She had already lost four sons in the war and she had one son left. And this man has this realization, I've been rescued, I've been saved, now I have a responsibility. The life I live should be worthy of the sacrifice that was given. The Bible is, is clear that salvation does not cost us a thing. Salvation is free. You can't earn it. You can't pay for it. You can't achieve it. You can't be good enough to get salvation. Thank God that God saves sinners like me and you by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We are saved. Just because salvation is free, though, doesn't mean that following Jesus won't cost you anything. Following Jesus will cost you your feelings, your flesh, your desire for revenge, your desire for bitterness, your desire to do what you want to do, selfish living. See, the more I follow Jesus, the more I allow him to make me a living stone building up his temple. The more I follow the stones that have been laid behind, the more I realize this is going to cost me something. And this is the moment in the movie where this man realizes I've got to live a life worthy of of the sacrifice. I want you to see this. Medic! Medic! We got a medic! They're tank busters, sir. P-51s. Angels on our shoulders. What, sir? Jason. Earn this.
To be honest with you, I, I wasn't sure how I'd feel coming back here. Every day, I think about what you said to me that day on the bridge. I've tried to live my life the best I could. I hope that was enough. I hope that at least in your eyes, I've earned what all of you have done for me. James? Captain John H. Miller. a powerful moment. I want to just take a moment of silence right now for those whose lives were laid down for our freedoms, the soldiers that fought so that we could be here today. Let's just take a moment of remembrance and silence. I want us to think about that moment where the man looks at his wife and he says, tell me I've, tell me I've lived a good life. Please tell me I earned the sacrifice. Again, I'm not saying that we can earn. We could never do enough to earn the salvation God gave us. It is a free gift. But that's not an excuse to live however we want to live. Salvation and really this Pentecost Sunday is this Realization, we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit. That when you miss it, just get back up and get back on the right path. Don't stay down in this place of, well, I missed it, so I'm just going to live how I want to live. Someone laid their lives down for you. Jesus gave his life for us. When that man was standing in front of that, that tomb, that stone, that cross, he was thinking about how he was that one son that was rescued, that one son that had a chance. Here he is 60 years later, and he's reflecting back when he was a 20-year-old boy. Now he's 80 years old. He's had 60 years of life, and he's asking himself this question, have I lived in light of the sacrifice that was made? I pray that I have. I pray that I've done my best to be a good dad, to be a good husband, to be the best man that God's called me to be, that when I missed it, I repented, that I got back on the right path, that I kept following the stones that have been laid out for me. This is the calling for every believer. Paul put it like this in Ephesians 4 verse 1, live the life that you are worthy, live the calling that you are 
call, this, uh, live a life worthy of the calling you have received from God. Proverbs puts it like this. Follow the path of wisdom. Make your father and mother grateful. There is a path that God lays for us. A path that's made up of the choices we make each day. And this path is laid with stones in scripture. This path has been laid out for us by the word of God. And I want to give for us just a couple of stones that I, I, I believe God lays out in the book of Proverbs that he's called us to walk in. Number one, live with lots of love. How do I live a life that's well lived for the Lord? How do I follow these stones that God's called me to walk out? Number one, live with a life of love. Live with a lot of love. I don't know if this is proper English. Normally I'm not always proper, but... Live with lots of love. Everybody say, live with lots of love. Proverbs 3, verse 3 says, Tie the love and compassion and kindness of God around your neck. Let it be etched on the tablet of your heart. Literally, it says your heart is like a stone tablet. Write the love of God on there. Put compassion on there. Love covers a multitude of sins. You can't make up for your past, but if you'll start loving today... If you'll receive the love of God and the forgiveness of God, it will wash away all of your sins in God's eyes. And from this day forward, you can start making a big impact with love. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12 says, hatred stirs up conflict. We have wars happening around the world, right? Russia versus Ukraine. This house versus this house. This spouse versus this spouse. This child versus a parent. There's a lot of hatred in our world. And hatred stirs up conflict, but he says, love covers over all wrongs. Let's say that together. Love covers over all wrongs. I say you can't make up for your past, but if you'll start loving today, I believe God will use the love from this day forward to be a blanket over so much of the stuff that's happened in your past. I've seen love change people's hearts more than trying to point in their face and win an argument. Love wins so often much more than anything else. This is why the wisest man in the world says, get the love of God inside you. Get the love. By the way, you don't have to agree with someone to love someone. You can love someone you disagree with. You can love people that you didn't vote for. You can love people that you don't maybe see eye to eye on. You don't have to agree with every part of their lifestyle to love them. We're living in a society today that says, if you don't agree with me, you don't love me. But that's not true. You can love someone you don't agree with. You can treat them with compassion and kindness. Don't move that stone. Keep the love of God forefront in your life. Number two, live with generosity. These stones that have been laid out for us, the stone of generosity in Scripture, the Bible teaches on a generous person will be blessed. A generous soul. I've never met a generous person that's walking a crooked path, that's living a miserable life. Generous people are following in that path of God's love and compassion. Right? Proverbs eleven twenty four 24 says, one person gives freely and gains even more. The generous soul will be blessed. The world of the generous gets larger and larger, but the world of the stingy, I don't want to bless people. I don't want to help people, right? I don't, I don't want to help my family. They weren't there for me. I'm not helping that homeless person. What if he uses it to buy drugs? I would rather err on the side of generosity than err on the side of suspicion about every person I try to help. I, I grew up with a dad that just took care of people. Right? Mom and dad, if we were at a gas station and somebody needed help, if he had a couple of dollars, he was going to give it to him. And I'd always be that one suspicious kid. I was like, what if he buys beer with it? My dad was like, we helped him. I'd rather err on the side of helping people than being a cold-hearted, stingy person that never helps a poor man in his life. The Bible says those who help the poor, those that are generous, they will be refreshed. Proverbs 11 verse 25 says a generous person will prosper. So be generous. You want to leave a legacy? By the way, one day we're all going to die. <laughs> You're like, awesome. This is feeling really good on Memorial Day weekend for me, Paul. I was hoping for a feel-good sermon. You came to the wrong church if you want feel-good messages every single Sunday. I'm going to preach the truth to you. This is, this is what we need. We need the word of God. It's truth. Here's the truth. Here's the truth. One day... You will step into eternity, and there will be a funeral service for you, and your family will show up. Not a whole lot of people will show up. I mean, maybe. Maybe there will be strangers there, 
But the people who will be there were the people who knew you the closest, and they will say things about you. We will find out about you at your funeral. They will say, man, Uncle Buck, he never gave a buck to anybody. <laughs> or they will say, Uncle Paul, he didn't do this. Or they'll say, you know, Aunt Ashley, they'll talk about us. You know what? I want to leave a stone behind of generosity. So my kids say, Dad always tried to help people when he could. Dad was generous to the Lord. He was ge- my dad was generous to the local church. He was generous to people. He was generous to other people. These are stones laid behind us. If we follow these stones, Moses said, if you follow these commandments, you will be blessed. You go, okay, well, I'm not living under the law of Moses. I'm living under the law of Christ. Okay, well, Jesus said, if you love your neighbor, if you love the Lord your God, listen, there is a reward for those who follow the path of life. I don't know about you, but I want to live for heaven's reward, not earthly temporary rewards. That requires me to follow some some stones that are laid out in Scripture. Here's the third stone. Love and treat your family well. The Bible has a lot to say with family love, family dynamics. I want the people who know me the best to respect me the most. I, I want to be less concerned with trying to impress a thousand followers on Instagram and more concerned with trying to impress my family with love and kindness and compassion and humility and being present. So here's what Proverbs says about families. Proverbs talks about husbands and wives, the way you talk to each other, fathers and daughters and sons and mothers, the way you speak to each other. Treat your family with respect. Honor your father and mother and you will live a long life. And all the parents said, amen. I remember one time I was sitting at the dinner table and I disrespected my mom. I didn't think I did, but I did. I did. Looking back on it, I was a brat. I said something. My dad said, get up. How many of y'all grew up with the spanking, like the family where you got spankings, all right? We're living in a society that's like, we need to get rid of this. We need to get rid of this. We need to get rid of this. I think we need to bring spankings back. (laughs) I think we just need to be careful about all the stuff we're trying to get rid of to fit in. This word is true, and it's outlasted all the trendy ideas of the day and this word says train a child up in the way he should go and do not spare the rod and do not get rid of discipline and correction teach your children don't be surprised if your kid grows up one day and you never disciplined him and he talks back to his boss and he loses his job you go I don't know why he lost his job well he was talking trash to his boss did you correct him when he was talking trash to his mom My dad pulled me out of that table. He brought me back to the room. He spanked me hard. He spanked my booty hard. And then uh, we we couldn't say B-U-T-T in our house growing up, so we had to say booty. But uh, I would try to hide socks in there and books in there to try to block it. He would find them. He'd say, pull those socks and books out. And then he'd say, do you understand what I'm saying to you, son? And I'd say, yeah. And he goes, You don't say yeah, you say yes, sir, turn over, one more spanking. Y'all are like, that's abuse. But you know, I grow up today, and I have a lot of respect and honor for my mom, my grand-grand, police officers, all the first responders, government officials, coaches, teachers, children. I was taught at a young age, you honor up, you honor down, you honor all around. You treat people with respect. Even if you don't like them, you could still treat them with respect, treat them with kindness. And then with family. We made family values important. We had a family dinner every week. We would spend time as a family. Don't let people decide what your family's going to look like. You make that decision as a family. And so we made a decision as for for our family. We were going to serve the Lord. So Sundays belonged to Jesus. We were going to church. Whether we liked it or not, we had to be there. And, uh, and then on top of that, we, we were required as a family to do certain family activities together. As I got older, now I've got five kids, and so we're teaching our kids the same thing. And so we try to do our best to be there for our kids. Well, I missed it recently. I, I missed one of my kids' football games. He had a football game, and, and I was at the gym, and I got carried away playing pickleball. 
And I showed up to his game too late. And I get there towards the end of the game, and Liam goes, where were you, Daddy? And I was like, I'm sorry. I missed it. He's like, were you working hard? I was like, no. <laughs> and he said, well, are you sorry? I said, yes, I'm sorry. He said, I forgive you. Don't let it happen again. <laughs> and I have been at every football game since then, right? I love my kids. Well, I had a chance this last week to go out of town to be with this very well-known, successful pastor. If I said his name, y'all know him. And he, was, he had invited me to come and spend time at his house with his family, and he was going to pour into about 10 to 15 pastors, and he was like, man, I really feel like I'm supposed to speak into you. I've got some prophetic words for you, Paul, but I want you here for it. Well, he had told me about it. Well, three days before that event was going to happen, it was out of town. I had everything prepared. I was booked to go and do it, and my son, Benaya, our second son, he landed in the talent show for the whole elementary as a whistler, and it was a big deal, <laughs> and he was like, Daddy, are you going to be at my talent show on Tuesday? It's the same day that I was supposed to be at this important gathering for pastors. And I was like praying through it, and I was thinking about how I missed that one game because I was playing pickleball. And by the way, I wrote in my notes, be a better dad than you are a pickleball player. Be a better parent than you are a golfer. Be a better spouse than you are a golfer or tennis player. Like be better at loving your family than you are at your hobbies. We're, we're, we're just, we're moving stones in our society and we're making certain things important that at the end of our life, in light of eternity, are not going to be that important. And so I called that pastor and I said, I really wanted to come, but my son is in the talent show and I just feel like I got to be there. It's a big deal to him. And I said, I'm sorry. And he goes, don't apologize. He said, you made the right decision, Paul. You need to be there for your son. So I was there at Benny's talent show. I got to play the music for him. Benny whistled, and he whistled so good for a full minute. <laughs> he had no clue how much I was sacrificing in my head to be there. But I was there. And I think so much of our lives, we're going to look back one day and go, like that older man, he looks at his wife and he goes, did I, did I live a good life? And I'll tell you, the answer to that question is not based on what your salary was, based on how far you made it in the company, based on how good you were at tennis or golf or pickleball or how much you worked out at the gym. The answer to that question is going to come down to, did you try your best to be there for your family? And we have this responsibility that God's given us, this gift. Number four, a stone to follow is live with honor towards all. They're taught in military to, to, to honor all those that are in authority, to respect all those that are in authority. We're taught this in Scripture, to honor those that are in authority. But again, we're in a society where people are moving the ancient stones. Well, I don't want to honor them. They didn't deserve it. They don't deserve it. I don't like them. You don't have to like someone to honor someone. Don't move the ancient stone. Follow the ancient stone. Well, what's it going to do for me? Honor always leads to blessing. I've never seen a man who lived with honor that didn't end up in the right place. And, and even when you end up in the wrong place for walking in honor like Joseph did, God always has a way of pulling you out of the pit and bringing you back into the palace. No matter how bad things get, stay in an honorable place. And if you miss it, we've all missed it. We've all missed it. But just get back to the path. When Douglas McKinnon, the CIA agent, got off the path, he would ask the native Indians in the mountains, how do I get back? Go back to the stones. Go back to the stones. Go back to this. I want the band to come out. Number five, live with forgiveness. The stone of forgiveness. What does that mean? It means to give mercy to everyone you interact with. You go, Paul, they don't deserve mercy. They haven't apologized. I'm not letting them off the hook. I'm not talking about letting them off the hook. I'm talking about getting yourself unhooked from bitterness and resentment. Whenever I've been hurt and I'm tempted to not forgive someone, I'm walking away from a path. And I'm going, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know how much pain they caused me and Ashley. You don't know what we've been through. And you can wander off that path. But the further you get off that path, you are not headed towards freedom. You see, the path from freedom, for freedom, from China to India, 
was laid by stones. As long as they followed the stones, they got through the path to freedom. When you start walking in resentment, you're not on the path towards freedom. You're on a path towards prison, an internal prison for which you hold the key. And if you will forgive them, you can unlock that prisoner and set yourself free. Get back on that path to go, I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Lord, forgive them. I forgive them. God, I release it. Mercy. Your mercy has been there for me, so I'm going to release it for those that need my mercy. Jesus said, if you don't forgive others, your father does not forgive you. You go, I don't like that. It's the truth. The truth hurts, but the truth will set you free. Truth sounds like hate to those who hate the truth. But if you'll stay on that path and go, okay, I'm going to walk in forgiveness. I'm telling you, there's a blessing. Number six, live with a hard work ethic. Proverbs talks a lot about the lazy, sluggish mindset. In Proverbs 13, verse 4, it says, The sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent, the hard worker, are fully satisfied. He says in Proverbs 20, verse 4, Sluggards do not plow in season. So when it's harvest time, they look for harvest, but they find nothing. So here's the pathway towards life, the pathway towards freedom. It's going to require hard work. I just want to give it up for anyone in the room that's got a job right now, or you're at least applying to to work at a job. Can we just cheer on the people that are doing their best to try to find a job or work in a job? During the great resignation in the last couple years, there's almost this temptation to just go, I don't want to work anymore. And Proverbs warns this. If you don't like it, don't email me. Email Proverbs about this. Proverbs, why did you talk about this? Just tell, tell Proverbs. I, I, I got enough hate mail. Just don't, don't send me the hate mail. Proverbs says, work hard. Work diligent. Honor the Sabbath, but don't turn every single day into the Sabbath. Find something with your hands to do. There's, there is meaning. And if you go, well, Paul, I'm retired. I don't have to work anymore. Okay, that's great. Enjoy your retirement. But how about one day a week you come and serve at the Dream Center? I just want one day a week. You go, okay, I I can give two hours. All right. Or 30 minutes. Come and be an usher, a greeter. Help us in the kids. You don't have to live your whole life never serving society, never making. You can make an impact. It's like that older man looking at his wife. Did I live a good life? Only a few people can answer that question. Live with a heart to say, I'm going to do the best I can with what I've got. Number seven, live with a trust and a surrender to God and his wisdom. Let his wisdom lead you. I preached a whole sermon on this. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. My own understanding is when I move the ancient boundary stone, doing what I want to do. I feel good about it. If it feels good, do it. God says, no, 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 no. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God's wisdom and he will make your path straight. Number eight, right here, live with courage. Live with courage in a world that's cowardice, that's full of fear, that's full of constant anxiety, that's constantly Googling what's the next virus that's going to come out. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Proverbs 28 verse 1 says, the wicked cower when no one pursues them. The wicked hide, though no one chases them. The wicked run off in fear, though no one pursues them. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. I believe God wants to wake up the church to get bold again, to get courageous again, to stop letting the world dictate how the church is supposed to think. The church should influence society, not the society influencing the church, right? The church should say, hey, we believe in these truths, and because we do, We're probably not going to shop at your business because of what you're doing right now. Because I don't want my kids walking in feeling confused all the time by what you're trying to press down my throat because you think this is the right way to, to be in America today. I don't want America shaping the church. I want the church to shape America. I don't want Target and Budweiser shaping how the church is supposed to think. I want the church to shape this generation. I don't want my kids growing up with a weak dad who says we're just going to bow down to what culture says because they got a lot they can hold over my head. No, 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 no. The righteous 
Paul, where does your righteousness come from? Have you been a good enough person to be righteous? No, no, no. My righteousness does not come by what I've done. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He died on the cross for my sins. He rose from the grave. I'm born again. I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit. And I am bold as a lion because he lives inside of me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. Don't let shame and guilt drive you into losing your moral compass. Don't let what society thinks about what your kids should be wearing and how they should be thinking determine what you're going to teach your children. Get back to the stones. You go, Paul, it's old school. No, 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 we need old school right now. Our world is so warped and confused, we got to get back to the old school. We got to get back to the ancient stones. I'm not talking about living under the, the law of Moses. I'm saying living with the law of Christ, the law of love, to say, Jesus, shape and direct my family. Shape and direct me as a man of God. Teach me how to walk in character and integrity and honesty and forgiveness and mercy and compassion and generosity and honor and courage. And if I follow this path, I'll get to the end of my life. And I want you to throw up that picture of those memorial stones, Arlington Cemetery, Arlington Cemetery, because this is Memorial Day. Tomorrow's not just a day off, it's a day to remember. We'll look at these stones and, and these soldiers, they, they stick these flags in front of these stones and on these stones are names. These stones are families that laid their lives down so that we could be here today. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. Where you sit, Billy Joe once sat. Oral Roberts once came in here. Lester Sumrall preached across the street. We're standing on these giants that laid their lives down. And if we follow this path, I look at those memorial stones. Throw that Arlington Cemetery picture up there again. I've been there. Throw up that other stone. We remember. We remember. Somebody say, follow the stones. You see, that was where Jesus was buried. The difference between his cemetery and Arlington Cemetery is he didn't stay there. He rose from the grave. That stone was rolled away. He is now the chief cornerstone on which we build our faith. And we are living stones being built up into the sanctuary that he is building. I want you to stand your feet all over this place. My last point right here, live with a heart of worship to Jesus. Maybe you've missed it. Maybe you feel like, Paul, I've, I've failed. I've made too many mistakes to get back up, to get on that path. No, you haven't. You have never, you cannot out -sin God's grace. God's grace is big enough to pull you back. If there's breath in your lungs, he's not done with you. You can get back on the path. Somebody say, get back on the path. Get back. If you've fallen down, just get back up. And you go, if I get back up, should I, should I go down the, the path of where I've been going? No, no, no. Go to the stones. Look for those ancient stones. Look for those words written in red. Look for what Jesus said. Follow that path. Follow that path towards freedom. Out of that slavery of sin out of that slavery of being owned by your feelings. Follow that path. The Holy Spirit will lead you step by step. He'll guide you. So walk not by the flesh, but walk by the Spirit. The works of the flesh are carnal, right? But the Holy Spirit, He gives us love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. So He says, stay in this path. Stay in this, abide in this path. Abide. I want us just to close our eyes all over this place. I want to pray for anyone here today that you know the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart on some areas that you just need to shift a little bit, change, surrender. Maybe the Holy Spirit is just wanting to wake up that giant inside you, that lion inside you to live with more courage, to live with more boldness, less fear, less fear of man, less worry. Maybe you're here today and you just say, man, I just need to lay some things down at this altar. I want to open this altar up for any person, whether you're saved, you're born again, or you're here today and you're not saved and you're saying, man, I just need to get down to that altar. I need to surrender to Jesus. If you're feeling a tug from God right now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm just going to ask you to just move out of your seat. Just start coming down to the altar. 
If you just need a touch from the Holy Spirit, if you need some freedom today, if you need this truth to be ingrained in your heart, if you want to get on that path, if you want the Holy Spirit to make some changes in your life today, I want you to just come and find a place at this altar. Humble yourself before God. And we're just going to worship. Man, will y'all just lead us into this time of worship all over this room. If you need healing, come down to the altar. If you need forgiveness, come down to the altar. If you need to surrender something, come down to the altar. If you need to get saved, come down to the altar. If you need a touch from the Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday, come down to the altar. This is a time just to say, Jesus, have your way. Jesus, do what you want to do. Yeah, let's just begin to worship him. Just begin to worship the Lord. Invite the Holy Spirit just to invade your heart, your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. The rocks are going to cry out. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those songs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. His mercy is here. His healing is here. His grace is here. His courage is here. Strength in Jesus' name. Healing in Jesus' name. Forgiveness in Jesus' name. Salvation in Jesus' name. He loves you. He's called you his own. You're a mighty warrior. A mighty man of God. A mighty man of valor. Close our eyes from the very back to the front. Holy Spirit, move in this place, God. Do what you want to do. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the earth. God, do what you want to do. To be overcome by your grace. 
Breathe new life, Lord. Pour out your mercy, Lord. Wash away. Renew our hearts. Fill us with hope today, God. Fill us with courage today, God. Fill us with your wisdom today, God. Get us back on the right path, Lord Jesus. Let us become. You're here today and you have not fully embraced the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but you want to. And you're like, man, I want the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Just raise your hand. You don't have to come down to the front. But if you're like, man, I really want the gifts of the Spirit in my life. I don't know how, but I just, I want to, I want to operate more in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I want to know the Holy Spirit more. I want to feel like I'm in tune and in alignment. If your hand's raised, I just want to pray for you right now. Lord, I just pray, God, just for an outpouring. You said in the book of Acts, that you will pour out your spirit in the last days and sons and daughters will prophesy that the old men will dream dreams and young men will have visions, that women and men, that all generations, God, would encounter you in a fresh way. God, you said that your Holy Spirit would give us gifts, the gift of wisdom, the gift of prophecy, the gift of faith, the gift of speaking in tongues. God, I just pray, Lord, for those that are in the room today that want those gifts in their life. They've never seen it before. They've never felt it before. But they're here today, and they know the presence of God is here. God, I pray, Lord, that you would make yourself real to them today. I pray, God, that as they have the faith to receive it, you would pour it out right now on their mind, on their heart, in their mouth, in their soul, God. Rivers of living water. Holy Spirit, I pray, God, that they would feel you this week. They would know that you are with them. You are guiding them, leading them, giving them words of knowledge, discernment, God, and understanding. Just say this with me, Jesus. Let's all say this together. Jesus, I surrender to you. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You rose from the grave, and I repent, and I receive your forgiveness. I receive your salvation. You said, Jesus, that you'd pour out your spirit as a gift for all who believe. So I receive that gift of the Holy Spirit in my life. I'm all yours, God. Have your way in me and through me. Let my life be a testimony for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.